Okay, hi there. Now, this is a paper tree video, which is done for the Form 4, that will probably be having their paper tree exams coming week. Now, so in this video, I will focus more on um, the technique for paper tree. Why is paper tree very important and how to actually score your paper tree. Now, in paper tree, let me just go through this. I will section this video into three different sections because there are actually a few parts in paper tree. Now, physics, paper tree. Now, basically, a physics paper tree is 40 marks. Very, very important. Divided into two parts. Two questions comprise the first part, 28 marks. And the other one more question is actually 12 marks. A total of them would be 40 marks. Now, this one question is actually the design experiment. So therefore, my advice to you is, why don't you all focus on the 28 marks and not the 12 marks because actually 12 marks don't really matter so much and there's actually a technique to solve that. So the first video, I'll talk about this 28 marks, a portion of the 28 marks, which actually is your question one. Now, so question one will normally consist of, you have to know how to take readings. So as you can see in this, in this paper, you need to learn how to take readings off from a stopwatch. Now, basically what can happen here is that there are a series of questions. You have to draw a table and draw a graph. Now, let me go through the marks that they will locate. So three marks will be on writing of variables. You will have five to seven marks on the table side. Okay, now five marks on the graphical side and basically another one more mark which is on stating on relationship okay now so let me just go through this one by one so if you want to talk about variables to me i think variables is actually one of the hardest thing to score why because every time students will always say i have variables is very simple but it is always not as easy as it seems for instance this question now it says to investigate the relationship between the mass and the period of an oscillation so some of you who are good, probably you can tell the manipulated variable straight away. Now, but for variables, if you get your manipulated wrong, you will always get your responding wrong because you will most likely to balit both of them. Okay, so here, let's start. Now, I teach you a technique on how to not go wrong with variables. There's two methods. Method number one, if you want to look for a variable, always look at the first question. They will always call you to draw a graph. Now, so you see here, there's a down so so far record, then here on the graph paper. Now remember, the first thing that you see versus the second thing that you see, is always a graph of y against x. Now remember, on your y axis, it will always be the responding variable, and on your x axis, it will always be your manipulated variable. So if I look at this, I know that the mass would be my manipulated variable, the time of oscillation will be my responding variable which I get from here, T and M, okay? Now, is this method 100% workable? Yes, it's pretty much 100% workable because here I've got another question. It says a student carries out an experiment to investigate the relationship between the mass M and the difference H of a liquid. Now, so M and H, if you want to know which is your manipulated variable, let's just go to the graph and it says draw a graph of H against M. So it is always a graph of responding variable against a graph of manipulated variable. Boom. Done. Okay. So that will secure your variable marks. Alright. Now, so two, three marks on variables. So the other constant variable, sometimes if you read through the question, or more or less you look at this, what is always being repeated? Now, look. Every time they will hang this, and the spring is always the same. So the variable for this will most likely be the spring constant. Okay. Now, I go into the second part, which is the table. Now, for the table part, which is here, now, why I say 5 to 7 marks now? Sometimes, um, it comes in bits and pieces. Like, you see, here, after the 3 marks on variable, what they always ask you to do is that you have to do record the readings, 2 marks, record the value, 1 mark, calculate, 1 mark. And then after that, tabulate. So if I calculate this 3, plus 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, that's a total of 7 marks. Now, 
it's the, it's almost the same skill for the seven marks because you need to know how to take readings and then after that do a tabulation now so on recording of readings of stopwatch there are actually a lot of apparatus that you need to know how to take readings from for instance you need to know how to take readings from ammeter you need to need know how to take readings from voltmeters you also need to know how to take from micrometer screw gauge vernier caliper probably from a protractor probably from a thermometer a meter rule and also sometimes they'll call you to do a ticker tape as well now the most important thing about all this is remember their sensitivity because that will determine how many decimal places you have to write. Similar to your burette in your chemistry, you always have to try to think about it, okay? So vernier caliper will be 0 0.01 cm, and so on, okay? So this is your sensitivity. So remember, if you use a vernier caliper and you manage to find that the reading is actually 4.1 cm, please do remember to always write this zero because the sensitivity for a vernier caliper is 0 0.01 cm. So if you know how to record your readings, Based on this, you should be fine. Now, on the next recording, normally they'll call you to record something which is slightly weirder. But don't worry, they'll always give you a formula. So the, the recorded value is T. They want you to divide by 10, get T, record the value of T. So that will be very simple as well. Calculate T squared will just be the square of that. So you can see that this few marks is actually quite easy. And when it comes to tabulation of three marks, just have to make sure that if they call you to tabulate three things, make sure there are three columns. So I'm going to do like that, like that. Okay. So M, the unit is in kg. T, the unit is in seconds. T squared, the units will be in seconds squared. Then write everything down. Make sure that your decimal place are consistent. Okay. Remember, do not draw your graph in this manner, which it goes M and then T and then t squared downwards okay now i'll show you how the answer looks like for you to understand what do i mean by consistency now watch when everything is in two decimal place the whole entire column must be in two decimal places okay if there's no decimal places needed here then we can just return it as normal values so this would be a good three marks okay so if you could do this that would be two three four five six seven which is a very simple thing but remember, you remember that you need to learn how to take readings from stopwatches, ammeter, voltmeters, and so on and so forth. Okay? Probably for your this form for last term exam, you might get a thermometer, most likely, on heat, to learning to calculate specific heat capacity. Now, so I'm going to go fast a little bit more so that this video become shorter. Now, next. On the next portion, they're going to draw on a graph paper. Now, let me tell you the difference between a school exam and a SPM paper. In the SPM paper, graphs are marked based on the number of ticks. Axis, if you have your axis labeled, one, one tick. If you label the units properly, one tick. The scale is proper, one tick. Because there will be five readings, if your points that you draw are labeled correctly in five points, which means five correct points, you'll get two marks, two ticks. But if you get one wrong, which means you got like four correct points, you'll only get one tick. If you get two readings wrong, then you're going to get zero. Now, if you draw a best straight curve, you're going to get one more tick. And if your size of the graph is more than 50%, about 70% of the paper, you get an additional tick. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven ticks, five marks. This is SBM format. Now, but for school exam format, it's slightly different. First, they'll judge your size of the graph. If your graph size is out of proportion, which means that it is less than 50%, your teacher will automatically grant you a good zero. So remember, size of the scale must be more than 50% and scale, try to use a better scale. How do you gonna do this scale properly? I can tell you, practice, okay? So try to draw graphs as much as possible. Now, in school, they always look for your title. They look for your label unit with the uh, label axis with unit label axis with unit and all your correct points and the straight line and your zero here okay can so remember um most probably your school teacher will not follow this format okay this is an spm format so i repeat our uh, title two points here two points here two points for unit one one point on the um graph of axis the, the back graph of best fit and remember to write your zero okay 
Now, if you have any other questions regarding the graph, kindly just drop a comment below and I'll reply it as soon as possible. Now, finally, after drawing the graph, you go into the relationship portion. Now, for the relationship portion, it's very simple. All you have to do is just look at it. Now, this is A is directly proportional to B. A increasing linearly as B increases. A decreasing linearly as B increases. A inversely proportional to B. And this graph can be redrawn as like that. If you put a 1 over, it becomes a directly proportional. So we say A is directly proportional to 1 over B. If you didn't get that, if you didn't get that, you can always just replay this video and you will know what are these five relationships are. With that, we have already done 3 plus 7 plus 5 plus 1, which is a 16 mark out of your 28. That will remain us with 12 marks for the subsequent video. Okay? Have fun trying the first question. The first question carries the most marks for your whole entire paper tree. So please score this. Thank you.